All right, so this part I'm going to be doing input and output devices only. I'll leave storage for last because input and output normally go really well together. And storage is quite a big one, which I want to cover in a separate video. So I'm going to list all the devices first for input, then state how they're used, features, so on and so forth, and do the same thing for output. So the devices are keyboard, mouse, scanner, graphics tablet, microphone, webcam, and sensor. Now, these are all input devices. And what is an input device? Simply any device that allows a user to put or enter information into a computer system. Now, the list I have here is not extensive. So, new stuff like a touch screen, that's also an input, but it's also an output. Because you have to touch stuff on the screen to actually tell the phone or the tablet what to do. Right? So, for keyboard, we know we use it to type. Right? We use it to type alphanumeric characters. So, alphanumeric simply means numbers letters special characters on a keyboard it means everything that you can type is alpha or numeric okay um people mainly use it for inputting data into a report a document a database so on and so forth okay we have a mouse it's a pointing device used to select items on screen so you can click on something to select it you can move your mouse over to highlight it so on and so forth it is normally used for navigation now some of you might be thinking, yes, it can be used for gaming as well, but let's keep it really simple and let's not go overboard. Next, we have a scanner. It essentially scans a physical hard copy into a soft copy. So a soft copy is a digital copy. So it converts a hard copy into a digital copy. It scans what's on the paper, puts it into the computer system and stores it as an image, a PDF, um, into a Word document, whatever it needs to do, right? So um, that's one of them. We have a graphics tablet. So sometimes you see people on the TV or you might have one as well. They use a tablet to actually draw stuff on screen, on their computer screen. That's called a graphics tablet. Now it can be used as a mouse as well, but people tend to use it for drawing and writing. Um, that's the main purpose there. A microphone, quite simple. I'm using a microphone. I'm using a headset now, which actually has... Um, headphones and a microphone attached to it so the microphone is the input device of this so the microphone is the input section of this device so the microphone it converts my voice my analog signals my sound waves into electrical signals and then stores that onto the computer okay it's normally used for whatever a mic is used for so voice over ip calls in internet chat voice recording like i'm doing now anything that you can think a microphone being used for we also have a webcam. It inputs video into the computer. Video and images. So what we can say images, we can say still images or moving images, which are videos. Keep in mind that there is no such thing as a video, right? Videos are simply an illusion created by multiple images being played or being viewed in succession. Simply meaning um, images are put one after the other to give the impression that something is moving. So again, I explained in one of my previous videos, if something says 30 frames per second, that simply means you're seeing 30 images per second. If something says 60 frames per second, you're seeing 60 images per second. Uh, lastly, we have a uh, sensor. So this could be any sensor in the environment. Normally, the easiest one to think about is like a thermometer, right? That's a temperature sensor. Now, you might go to the GP and they might have a thermometer they put on under your arm or under your tongue that might be connected to a computer and they might actually input that data into the computer or they might see it on a screen, right? So that just think of simple basic sensors, a temperature sensor uh, or a moisture sensor. Some cars might have a moisture sensor on the windscreen so that when it starts to rain, the, um, the wipers turn on automatically. Some cars might also have a, a pressure sensor in the tires. So when they drop below a certain pressure, the car is where well, the car alerts the person. OK, you need to get air for these tires. OK, so those are some of the input devices that um, I have here. Let's look at the output devices now. And what is an output device? It simply puts digital information in a manner that can be read read by the user. So again, it puts digital information in a manner that can be read by the user. So, for example, if you're using a computer screen like I'm using now, you, you most likely have it connected to some form of screen, monitor, TV, uh, projector, something, right? So the first thing I actually have here is a monitor. 
So it outputs images on screen so the users can see it. Everything we see on screen is an image drawn by the computer and sent to the monitor so that we can see it. So it is used for viewing user interfaces, watching videos, playing games, anything or any action or activity that needs you to look at a screen. Okay, it's quite simple. Um, we have a printer next. This is quite a simple one. It converts a soft copy, so a digital copy, into a hard copy. So this is actually the opposite of a scanner. Whereas a scanner does paper to digital, this does digital to paper. Okay? We have what's known as a plotter as well. Now, this is essentially a printer as well, but it's a special kind of printer. This is the kind of printer that people normally use to draw um, maps and very detailed drawings. Because printers, they're really good, but they're not great for drawing detail um, drawings. We have speakers as well. We know that converts digital signals into analog output, whereas a microphone does the opposite. So speakers and microphones are the opposite. So a microphone converts your analog voice that it picks up into digital signals stored on a PC, whereas a, um, sorry, a speaker converts digital to analog. Right after speakers, we could do headphones as well. It's exactly the same thing. It's just, I guess, a more portable version of a speaker, even though we have Bluetooth speakers now. Headphones normally sit, obviously, on your head. Um, they cover your ears, and they play sound in exactly the same way a speaker does, just not as loud. Next, we have a projector. Now, a projector is more or less the same as a monitor. But however, it beams the image onto a surface, rather than having the image contained inside a shell like a monitor or a screen. It actually beams the image onto a wall or a screen or a piece of paper, however it does it, okay? So those are input and output devices. And remember, you have to keep in mind the names tell you exactly what they do. So an input device puts information, data into the computer system, okay? But when defining these things in the exam, try not to use an input device is a device that inputs data. Try not to do that. Try to word it as try to word it slightly differently. Okay, so an input device is one which allows the user to enter data or information into a computer system. An output device, exactly the same thing. An output device allows the user to view, listen, um, yeah, to view or listen to digital data in a manner that's understandable or understood by them. Sorry. So again, if we're playing, if you click on an MP3, right, there's some stuff going on in the background that you and I won't understand. That's the binary code being run in the background, right? So for us to understand the song or the words in that song, the computer has to then convert that to something that we can understand, something that we can recognize, which is why we hear sound when we click on an MP3 on our phones or tablets or PCs, okay? So that's input and output devices there. Um... This is the method I'm going to be trying, trialing anyway, to see if it makes sense to do it this way. Creating the PowerPoint takes a very long time to have it as nicely as I had the first section. And I'd rather get these videos out quicker. So let me know in the comment section if this is working or not working for you guys. If it does not work, I might have to go to a PowerPoint system, but it does take a lot longer to get videos out. Okay, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the rest of the series.